Okay, this is a short video on the use of drop-down menu questions in the formula question. So these can obviously be combined with other parts in a formula question, but I'm just going to look at how drop-down menus work. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here's a question, chemistry question, but you can apply it to whatever you want. And the question is, for the following reaction, fill in the appropriate reagent. So how would you get this reaction to go? And there's a drop-down menu. Obviously, this appears slightly different in the mobile version where you can just select one, but nonetheless, it's a drop-down menu and you have to pick which of the following reagents are going to be successful in making this reaction happen. And you can only pick one, so you got to pick the best. Uh, the reaction may happen under some conditions, but it will happen most efficiently under maybe these conditions. Let's check. Correct answer. So we can do the friedel craft calculation and methylate our benzene to make toluene. Ignoring the chemistry of this question, that's the general format of this question. So if we start again and we pick a different answer, we can see that we are, sorry, if we start again and we pick a different answer, we can see that that's the wrong answer. So you get no marks. So it's an all or nothing kind of question. How do they work? Well, let's have a look at this question. So let's edit the question. I'll put some of these bits and pieces down below the question, but formula questions, um, if you haven't seen them before, they're actually capable of having many different parts inside them. So this is just a one part question and the main question text, generally I don't put too many things in there um, because usually you want to do it by parts and you can see in the parts, you can add in as many parts as you want and you can mark them all independently and you can change the relative weighting of each part. Before we get into that though, let's look at how I set this question up. So this, uh, and you can find the Moodle formulas um, webpage, again, I'll put a link below in the description. Um, the guys who have set this up, this is a great kind of question. It's The power of this question is really extensive. You can do all sorts of things. But in this case, we've set up a global variable. So this variable will be a variable in all of the parts of our questions. And a variable is basically a particular value. And you can check against this variable or you can make this variable appear inside your question. So in this case, I just call it choices because these are the different options. And then I have a list of them and you'll see that they are all inside inverted commas, separated by a comma. And you finish every line with a semicolon because that lets uh, the question know that that's the end of that line. You can obviously put in another variable. And one of the things you can do or some of the different things you can do is you can say that a global variable would depend on a random variable, all sorts of different things. We're not going to get into that here. We're just going to say that this is our choices and each of those choices is a little bit of text. So how does that work in our question? Well, if we look at part one and we look at the question itself, you'll see that inside these curly braces, I have underscore zero, which is the first answer, colon choices, which is our variable, and then colon MCE, so a multiple choice error of zero and then the answer and in this case the answer is number one and this is the only little slightly bit tricky bit in this if you can copy and paste all the rest and adapt it is that the numbering here starts at zero so this is answer zero this is answer one answer one is the correct answer that'll give you what you need these are very handy if you set up an array of choices you can then cycle different uh, pictures through these uh, with the same sets of choices and you can very quickly generate a quite a large question bank and then once you're done, um, you can save changes at that point. You can obviously uh, change, you can give different feedback for correct answers, incorrect answers, all the usual things you can do in questions. So none of the rest of this is relevant. Save the question and now we have a drop down menu question. Obviously then, as usual, if you want to make another one, the easiest thing to do is just to duplicate that question. So I can duplicate that question and I can, all I need to do is change the image of the reaction and then make sure that I have the answer again counting from zero. Really important that you count from zero and have the correct answer. And that's how that works. All right. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, post them below. Thanks.